Hey everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I'm going to be covering some tips for heat embossing and I just wanted to share some of the basic supplies that you'll need. You need a sticky ink like Versamark ink pad. It's a transparent sticky uh, ink that you can use for holding the powder to the paper surface. Embossing powder comes in a wide array of different styles. You can get it in a transparent clear, you can get it in metallics, it comes in opaque colors like black, white, in red, pink, green. It comes in transparent colors. It also comes in different grinds like a fine detail grind, a regular grind, and even an ultra thick. Some other handy tools involve an anti-static pouch like the Embossing Magic or the Powder Tool. And you're of course going to need a heat source. And I really like using an embossing gun. You can use alternative sources for heat embossing, but an embossing gun is really going to give you the best results. Now not only can you heat emboss with a Versamark ink pad, but you can also use pigment inks. And pigment inks are a thicker type of ink pad that work well with clear embossing powders. You can actually pour those over your image that has been stamped with a colored pigment ink and the color will show through the clear embossing powder. If you use it with a Versamark, which is a transparent ink, then it's gonna be completely clear, whatever you emboss, but it will be raised and shiny when you're finished. I did want to take a moment to show you the difference between a dye ink pad and a pigment ink pad. The one on the left is dye and the ink is very watery and dye, just like the name implies. The one on the right is pigment and it has a foam based pad and the ink is much thicker and tackier and it will enable the embossing powder to cling to the image that you stamped on paper. Now, depending on where you live or the climate you live in, uh, you may have to deal with issues of electrostatic uh, causing the powder to stick in areas you don't want on your paper surface, or you may have lotion or oil from your fingertips that gets on the paper surface. To eliminate this, you can use the anti-static pouch, the embossing magic pouch, or the powder tool and pounce that across the surface of the paper to eliminate any of the moisture or electrostatic stuff that's going on there. And then you're ready to ink up your stamp and stamp on your paper surface. And I'm inking up here first with a Versamagic ink. And then I'm also gonna ink up with a pigment ink. And this is one of the Memento Lux colors. I think this one's called Angel Pink. And I'm gonna go ahead and ink those up and stamp so you can see the difference with clear embossing over these two different types of ink. So now that I have my images stamped, I'm going to take a jar of clear embossing powder. This one happens to be by Wow, and it's a very large jar. And I've got a coffee filter down underneath to catch the excess. I'm just gonna kind of tap the paper surface so the excess all drops down in there. And then I'm gonna move those carefully out of the way so that I don't inadvertently blow embossing powder all over the place. And I'm gonna grab my heat gun and heat it up for about 30 seconds. So that preheating helps get it to optimal temperature. And then I'm gonna bring the heat embossing gun close enough to the powder to watch it melt. And it's gonna turn from granular to shiny and raised. And that's how you'll know when it's finished and you can move on. And I start off a little further away and then come in closer, but you do need to visually watch it turn from granular to shiny. And that's how you know when you don't have any more granular spots that you've got everything completely embossed. So you do need to check to make sure, because otherwise if you go to do something else to it, like color over the top, if you haven't thoroughly heated it and melted it, you're just gonna get powder going all over the place. So now I'm gonna take a metallic ink. This is also referred to as a pigment ink. This one happens to be the Golden Delicata Glitz. Uh, ink by uh, Sukineko, and I love this ink. It looks gorgeous when it's not embossed, but you can emboss it if you want because it is sticky, like a pigment ink. So I'm just gonna pour some gold powder over the top of that, and I also stamped the exact same image in the transparent Versamagic ink, so you can see the difference that you get between a metallic embossing ink or an opaque embossing ink over the top of Versamagic and over the top of a metallic pigment ink. In uh, most cases, you're gonna get pretty similar results. The nice thing about using a pigment ink underneath the powder, especially if it matches, if you missed any spots, um, it is not very noticeable. And here I just heated it exactly the same as I did before, and there you can see I've got a shiny gold raised image. It's kind of cool that you can get that hallmark look right there in the comfort of your home. <laughs> 
So I wanted to explain a little bit about the samples I'm sharing here. I've got a clear powder over the top of Versamagic ink, which is transparent. I've got a pigment ink in pink, actually two shades of pink, and there's clear powder over the top of those tinted pigment inks. Then I have a gold opaque powder over Versamagic on the left, and then again over the tinted gold ink in the middle. Transparent pink powder over Versamagic a glitter tinted embossing powder over the top of Versamagic. And then over here, I have another tinted transparent embossing powder over the top of Versamagic ink. Then I also wanted to show you there are opaque colored embossing powders. And I stamped everything with a Versamagic pad, and then I applied these different tinted opaque embossing powders over the top of them on white cardstock. And then you can see also how well the opaque powders show up on black cardstock. On this project, I'm going to be using an opaque white embossing powder. So I've got a cling background stamp by MFT loaded here into my Misty, and I'm just going to go ahead ink up with Versamagic and stamp over the top of a piece of Taffy Card Shop cardstock. And once I'm sure that I've got this pressed very firmly and I have my impression completely across the whole surface of the cardstock, it's a quarter sheet of cardstock, I'm going to grab my tweezers so that way I can get a hold of it without smearing it and lift it off. And of course, it's really hard to see because the Versamagic ink is transparent, so you don't see much until you start to pour the embossing powder over the top. And this is Hero Arts opaque white powder that I'm working with. I'm just going to go ahead and get that sprinkled all over the top, and I'll rotate the cardstock and let the excess fall down into the coffee filter. Like before, I did preheat my heat gun for about 30 seconds before I started embossing. And for a project this size, I like to place it into a container that will keep it in position while I'm running the embossing gun over the top. So something like a shoebox lid or even a paper plate like this that has a deeper sides that'll keep it from blowing around works great. And this is also uh, great for safety because it keeps your fingers out of the way of the heat gun, which can exceed temperatures of 350 degrees. And no, you cannot use a blow dryer for the same effect because it does not get hot enough and it has too high an airflow anyway. Now I went ahead and trimmed this panel down because of the layout I'm using on this particular card. And I'm gonna grab some tape runner and go ahead and get that mounted in two separate pieces to the card front. You'll see that I'm allowing just a slight gap as part of my layout. I've already embossed a greeting with white embossing powder and Versamagic ink on a scrap of black cardstock, and I'm going to put some foam tape on the back side of that and mount that to my card front. I also heat embossed a peony flower from the Mondo peony stamp set with white powder using Versamagic ink as well onto some pale rose card shop cardstock. But I felt I wanted to give it just a little bit more visual pop because it is such a light color of pink cardstock. So I'm going to grab a Zig Art Graphic Twin marker in a pink shade that is just slightly darker than the cardstock that I've stamped on. And I'm going to use that to trace around the edges of the flower along the embossing lines. And this is going to give some shading and visual depth to the floral image. All that's left now is to go ahead and put some foam mounting tape on the back of my flower, get it mounted in place on my card front. And to finish off the card, I did add some Pretty Pink Posh Sparkling Clear Sequins. And I think the whole white embossing and the sequins and everything with a little bit of coloring with the marker really sets the whole project off. Hope you got some good tips for heat embossing in today's video. All the supplies are available at ellenhudson.com. Thanks for watching.